Good morning. My name is Stella Natufe, and I work for the City of Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. Welcome to the BACP Business Education Workshop webinar series. We have adapted our regular business education workshops at City Hall into these webinars until further notice. On behalf of our Commissioner, Rosa Escarano, I want to inform you that business licenses can be processed online by visiting www.chicagobusinessdirect.org. If you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program, you can get credit for joining this webinar by sending an email to bacpoutreach at cityofchicago.org. Again, that email is bacpoutreach at cityofchicago.org. If you want to learn more about this program, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. To help guide your business and employees during the reopening process, please visit www.chicago.gov forward slash reopening. Also BACP and the City of Chicago's Office of Emergency Management and Communications created Shy Biz Emergency Alerts. You can opt in to receive targeted emer emergency alerts for business community. If you are interested, please visit chicago.gov forward slash shy biz alerts. We encourage all of our attendees to ask questions. Please use the chat box and send your questions to all panelists. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Today's webinar is entitled To Thy Own Self Be True, Discovering the Value in Your Personal Brand. I will now turn over this webinar to Nina, a professional lecturer and advertiser professional in residence at DePaul University. To be here and my slides are not moving. Uh oh. Oh, there they go. Yay. Good. I am so happy to be here talking to Chicagoans, Chicago um, entrepreneurs, and connecting with you. The reason, one of the reasons I'm so happy to be here is I absolutely love Chicago. The fact that I'm a Chicagoan, born and raised, is a big part of who I am, or what I consider to be my personal brand. Another part of who I am, or my brand, is that I love the Beatles. In fact, I saw the Beatles in concert twice in Chicago with my mother. I was young. My grandparents on my mother's side were Swedish immigrants in the early 1900s, and my grandfather was a carpenter and a ha had a hand in building the classic Chicago bungalow dotting the south side, which you see a picture of here. It almost looks exactly like the house I grew up in. <clears throat> I lived in that house until I was 11 when racial unrest drove my family to the northern suburbs, where my parents bought the cheapest house they could find so I could go to Nutra High School. It was like we moved to a different planet. I learned to adjust and eventually found a way to fit into a much richer and educated community. My father was a feminist. He wanted me to go to college and become anything I wanted to be. As a result, I was the first girl in my family to go to college. He even told my nine-year-old self that I was the right age to be the first woman president of the United States. I'm not so sure he was right about that. but. Close. My parents had made great sacrifices so I could go to college, and I have never, ever taken that for granted. Okay, now they're not moving again. Uh, still, oh, here. Maybe I have to. Hmm. Let me try this. There we go. Another way. Thank you for your patience. Today, I'm an advertising professional in residence at DePaul University. I spent 30 years um, at, in advertising at Leo Burnett in Chicago, and many of my clients were top Chicago companies like Allstate, McDonald's, and Kraft. Um, in 2018, I went to back to kind of school, and I received my certification as a certified professional coactive coach and also um, in the leadership circle profile, which we will talk about a little bit later toward the end. Um, and I started a coaching business. Um, when I started working at DePaul, I created 
this essentially what we're going to do today, which is an abbreviated version uh, of my personal branding class. Um, I kind of combined my expertise in brand marketing and coaching to create this class. And it's a little bit different than maybe some other personal branding um, books or, or webinars that you've done. So hopefully you'll get, you'll, you'll find it to be a little bit fun. I started with my story today because I started with my story, our stories today, because stories are the foundations of who we are. Our histories and our experiences have shaped our values, our actions, our personalities, and the impact that we have on the world around us. And these are the core elements of any brand, personal or commercial. So let's talk about commercial brands for a hot minute. And then I want to go into more detail about what I see as the value of a personal brand and what we are going to do today to find your authentic brand. You might want to grab a pen and paper or have, you know, your, if you want to use an iPad or something electronic. Um, we're going to have some exercises and take a couple of two minute breaks later in the, the webinar for you to kind of get started on creating your brand. Um, so you just, might want to get a, I think pen and paper kind of is easier at this point, but you can do with what obviously what you want. Um, but anyway, back to the, um, let's take a look at Southwestern American Airlines. Um, I love this example because what they do is exactly the same. They fly airplanes that transport people between cities. How and why they do it are very different. Southwest has a vision, really pithy vision. The vision of Southwest Airlines is to become the world's most loved, most flown, and most profitable airline. The mission of Southwest Airlines is dedicated to the highest quality of customer service, delivered with a sense of warmth, friendliness, individual pride, and company spirit. This vision and mission drives everything that they do, and it re you can really see their values. They have friendly, casual personality and design, even have a little heart as their logo. Their actions are bags fly free and one class service. It's very, very clear to understand their brand. In my humble opinion, American Airlines brand is a little harder to understand. Um, I had more difficulty finding an official vision statement, but I, to summarize this very long mission statement that, they, that I have here on the slide, um, they aim to be a wor the world's most reliable affordable and profitable airline. While less pithy and potentially less clear than Southwest, how and why they do business is reflected in their actions and they are very different. They have first class service, they have global destinations. They have a pay to play kind of model. You pay more, you get more from everything for leg room to the number of bags. The frequent business traveler is their most important customer. So you can see, think about how I want you to kind of keep this example in mind as we get to our, as we get to creating our brands later in the, um, in the webinar. Um, you may be familiar with Simon Sinek. In 2009, he made this very, um, what has become famous, at least among marketers, TED Talk called Start With Why, How Great Leaders Inspire Action. He makes a compelling case for the reason why some leaders and companies are more successful than others. And if you, and his, his point is that what we do and what companies do is not differentiating. We all do the same things. We, we, um, many of us are very replaceable Southwest airlines and American airlines do exactly the same thing. How they do business starts to differentiate. And even more importantly is why they are in business. What is their core reason for being in business? And if they market the why outwards instead of what inwards, they will be more successful. It's a great TED talk. It's easy to find on the, uh, I, if you haven't ever watched it, I highly recommend it. And the important talk about the, the value for us today is when it comes to personal branding and thinking about your own differentiations, your own differentiation, 
Um, how you do things is more important than what you do. Well, I do think it's really important to understand your purpose, but when you are, it's really your actions and how you work that really differentiate you from other people and make you who you are. Now, as entrepreneurs, you have undoubtedly um, worked hard at creating successful business offerings, great value to your customers, and how and why you do business is contributing to your success. So what does this have to do with personal branding? Um, as I said, it's, be, it's the, the stuff we do that our, fills our resumes is not really as important as how and why we do it. And yet, a Harvard Business Review, Review study found that fewer than 20% of leaders have a strong sense of their own individual purpose. And even, even fewer can distill their purpose into a concrete statement. So at least for all of us today, we're gonna to try to solve that. <laughs> but I also um, believe that there's a more important reason to get in touch with your personal brand. There are 11,000 or more titles about personal branding on Amazon. And the vast majority of them say things like, 10 steps to a more professional you, creating a better you, how to, how to self, uh, sell yourself. I'm not really interested in creating a better you. I think you're already awesome. Um, there is nothing wrong with these approaches. Um, many of them give great advice and how to put your personal brand in the marketplace, which has never been easier and frankly more important than your career business success. In fact, personal branding for dummies is a good is a really good source for that if you're interested. Um, but my interest in, in talking with you today helping my students and my clients define their personal brand is less about turning them into something that they're not or even selling themselves. It's about really getting in touch with their authentic brand and making sure they're showing up as their authentic brand every day. For me, it's about happiness. Happiness is that feeling that comes over you when you know life is good and you can't help but smile. It's the opposite of sadness. Happiness is a sense of well being, joy, or contentment. When people are successful or safe or lucky, they feel happiness. No one ever complained about feeling too much happiness. And when we are rocking it at work, have close relationships, and are doing what we love to do, we are fulfilled. And we are fulfilled, we are happy. Fulfilled is defined as satisfied or happy because of fully developing one's abilities or character. And as Steve Jobs once said, the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Yes, having a great understanding of your impact on the world, your values, your actions, and personality will help you market your authentic self. But I believe it will also help you be a more fulfilled person. Oh, I've got to learn how to do my slides better. Okay. Why? Because it will help you know why you are happy or unhappy. It will help you make decisions based on your values to resolve conflicts between you and your loved ones. Knowing your impact on the world, your values, your actions will help you market your authentic self, but it also help you, um, it will just help you in life. So think of, here's why, think about this. Think about a recurring argument you are having with your spouse, your roommate, best friend, parents. What are you really arguing about? Taking out the garbage, doing the dishes, spending money, or are you clashing over your values? I will put good money on it that you're clashing over your values. And that if you learn to respect each other value differences, your arguments will become a little more, well, maybe interesting. You might even get beyond them because none of us have the same values. And we usually, um, our arguments usually really are not about what they're, what they're actually about. Um, and importantly, um, I think having, doing the work for a personal brand will help you be confident in the choices that you make. Um, now, don't take my word for it. These are all 
kind of testimonials from people who've taken this program. I'm only putting them in there not to kind of sell myself in any way, but to let you know that it does actually work. Um, one of my students said, I learned so much during my time in your class, both about my career ambitions and about myself. I never expected to learn so much about my values and how much they drive my future. Um, and then someone who's not a student said, I was pushed to self-reflect, listen to my intuition, question who I was and what my values said about me. I had asked myself, do I like this? Do I like me? What areas of me in my life can I improve? And then someone else, I'll just read one more. I created a resume and a portfolio that was truly a reflection of me. Then I looked for jobs that would fit my personal brand and would look at my submitted materials as a true reflection of me. This is meant not uh, this meant not applying to many jobs and saying no to certain opportunities that I felt would not fit my authentic self or make me happy. Finally, some people think this is hard work. Some people think it's fun. It's not really complicated. I'm going to try to simplify it here today and hopefully we can have some fun. I think the most when you could have fun with it and not think of it as hard work, um, that's just changing your perspective. One of the things that will make this more fun um, after this webinar, if you want to really keep going with it, is to get a partner, a friend to do it with you and so that you can kind of push each other and help each other. Somebody who knows you well, who helps you create your brand. Now let's get started. So here are the key elements or framework that um, you're going to end up with for creating your brand. You're going to, we're going to work on the impact that you have um, on the world and on your community. We're going to work on your values. We're going to work on your actions and your personality. We actually aren't going to do it in this order though. We're going to start with your story. We're going to start with values, go to actions and personality and come back to impact. And, and by the way, um, this is a pretty good, if, since you're all entrepreneurs, I believe, if you feel like you want to do some more work on your, your business brand, this is a pretty good construct. Um, and after you have a strategy, um, if you want to put it into the marketplace on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you like, then you can execute your strategy with tone, color, design, and a minimum, you could greatly improve your LinkedIn profile. And that, but that's the end game, and we're at the beginning. So let's um, let's kind of get started here. The first thing, the first thing that I always like to do with when we start working in personal brand. Um, oh wait a second. I just want to, I'm going to go into, I'm sorry, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail here about what each one of these is. What is the impact on the world around you? What makes you special? Why you exist? Your values are what you stand for. What's most important in your life? What makes you happy? Your actions are what you do, how you live into your values, what actions that you take, and your style, your personality um, is your style, your traits, your character, and your temperament. So those are the kind of, and you want, when it, when you're all done with this, you kind of want to make sure that your actions um, reflect your values. You, you'll be able to see how all of these, these things work together and create a brand as differentiating as Southwest Airlines. And authentically you. So, but what I do like to do to get started is every, as we started this, talk today with a story. Everybody, we have a story and our history does help to find us. So psychology professor Dan McAdams provided us with a simple model for understanding how you, how as human beings, our personalities develop over time in three layers. The foundation is who we are at birth, how we develop in early life, our traits. The second layer is our goals and values, what we believe and strive for as we get older. And the final layer is our stories, what we choose to remember about our past and how we make it meaningful now and in the future. 
We make sense of who we are by piecing together stories from our reconstructed past, perceived present and imagined future. So I'm gonna ask you to write your story in one or two pages. Now, obviously we don't have enough time to do that today, but include key facts in your foundation that have contributed to who you are and the experiences of your past that are meaningful to who you are today. Um, you're essentially writing a creative nonfiction piece and a creative nonfiction works well when you start with a prompt. You start with a prompt and then just write what comes to mind. You don't judge, don't edit, just keep writing and let your mind take you where it goes naturally. And include rich detail from your past that are meaningful to you. Think about peak experiences when you were happy, when you were happiest or felt most successful. And think about struggles that you overcame because these will, these, these stories will help you get in touch with your values. So while we don't have time to, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go one more. While we don't have time to, um, to write your story today, um, I do would like you to just kind of write a sentence or two, maybe a paragraph. I'm gonna give you two minutes um, and some prompt options like on the day I was born, I was born in, I'm the child of, or start with a meaningful life experience, such as moving to a new city or country, a significant death, mastering a significant skill or story, overcoming an op obstacle. Strive for rich story content that includes key facts and experiences in your life that contribute to you are today. I'm gonna to go back here one second and say, so here's one of the stories that I've written about myself. It's on my website. And it was just, I started with the, a memory of, of something that happened when I was uh, 16. And it's, so I was like, when I was growing up, once every summer, my family went to Ravinia, an outdoor music venue for a picnic and concert. One year as we were leaving the parking lot, we got trapped in a traffic gridlock. Cars from every direction moved into the intersection and none of us could move. There didn't seem to be a way out of the mess. So I jumped out of the car and started directing traffic until the car started moving. My dad said to my brother, someday she's gonna be make a great executive. I was 16 and just wanted to get home. But stepping in to lead and solve problems turns out to be the thing that I've always done. My father was a human resource consultant and my mother an artist. So I guess I was meant to be in advertising where I could use both my left and right brains and so on. So think about a story, um, a, an event and just kind of start writing it. And I'm gonna give you two minutes just to get a little bit going um, and then you can finish it later. But um, I just wanted you to get started. So I'm setting my timer here for two minutes and then I will come back to you.
can't seem to change, cancel the, the, wow, that was weird. Uh, okay, two minutes is up. I hope you've gotten some, um, I've gotten, hope you've gotten some, um, some good starts to your story and that you'll be able to, to write more later, um, but be able to use what we have, uh, what you have so far in helping you to discover your values. As said, we're gonna, we start with our stories and then our step, we're gonna start with our values and get to impact last, even though it was first on the chart. Um, so discovering your values is a lot about looking at what your life experiences say about you. What did your story reveal about what's important to you? What makes you happy? What are your core beliefs? Um, what really is most important to you? You can look at also some areas of your life that maybe aren't, aren't going as well, or look at times in your life when things weren't going as well, and think about what values were not being honored. Um, I learned a lot about my values when I was the most unhappy um, and was able to make, get myself make some changes in my life because I knew that my values were not being honored. Um, so we're going to do a little values exercise um, now um, where you're going to uh, if you can see this, these are just a big long list of values that um, uh, that it's just to kind of jog your mind, but you don't have to use these, but there are things like adaptability, achievement, responsibility, knowledge, justice. Um, uh, let's see what, if I can read some of these others, um, but you know, you kind of know what values are, whether Order and organization is important to you, whether family, relationships, community, um, balance, beauty. Um, I want you to, I want you to either look at this list or something else. And by these, by the way, there's lists all over the internet, just like Google, you know, values lists, and you'll be able to get them to, and that's really just to help you think about what might be important to you. Um, and um, so anyway, I would like you to write down 12 values. I'm gonna give you um, two minutes to think of 12 values um, that are important to you. I'm gonna use something different in my phone.
Okay, two minutes are up. So now, now I want you to just look at your list and circle the six values that without thinking about it too much, I'm only gonna give you a few seconds to do this, um, without thinking about it too much are the most important to you. Okay, hopefully you've gotten down to six now. Okay, now we're going to move on to actions. This is usually a little bit easier. Make a list of the of at least 12 things that you do. Focus on the tangible actions that you things that you love to do, things that you actually do or are required to do, um, but mostly things that I think probably you really like to do that spend a lot of time. So if you have a resume, these are kinds of things that might show up in your resume. You, so I have, I write, I coach, I lead, I'm a strategist, I'm an organizer, I draw, well, I don't draw, but I hike, I think they're just examples. I play strategic board games or I play video games. I love to do puzzles. Um, I walk 10 miles a day, whatever it is that you do um, that, that really make up your time, um, both both in your work life and in your personal life. Um, and write down 12 of those. And again, I'm gonna give you two minutes. Okay, that's two minutes. Now you know the drill. Circle the six actions that most represent your values that you think really are the things that make you the happiest and um, link to your values. I'm just gonna give you about 15 seconds. Okay, now next we're going to do personality. I'm going to make a list of the 12 of your personality traits. These are the things that you know about yourself, but also maybe what other people say about you. And to just give you some, some help, again, all over the web, you can look up personality, um, personality words and really get down to the ones that are most important to you, what think that really that you think describe you. Um, and things like you're fearless, you're unfriendly, you're bossy, you're friendly, you're dishonest, you're rude, you're stubborn, 
mostly I like positive words though, like happy, courteous, humorous, self-disciplined, adventuresome. So I'm gonna give you two minutes to write down your 12 words. Okay, and now circle the six um, that are, whoops, I've got a typo in here. Circle the six that I most represent your personality. Um, circle six personalities that, and I, focus on the things that you wanna be known for. Like these are the things, so, because eventually you're gonna get to the point where you're gonna wanna lean into the, things that you love the most about yourself and also what you want to communicate to other people. So if you think you're really nice and that's one of the, um, it's really important to you that other people see you as nice, circle nice. Um, so circle six of them. Don't overthink it. I'm going to give you 15 seconds. Okay, so we're going to move on to impact, but before we do, I want to just want to say a couple things like you've got a really good start right now. Um, and, and you've got a start that's kind of like your initial your first thoughts when we're we're done with this. And if you want to keep doing it, you're going to want to refine it, but try not to overthink it and really hang on to what your first gut feelings were because they were probably pretty good. And I'll talk a little bit more later about how you live with this and make it better. But now I want to move on to impact. This is done last because it is, it's the why, you know, what is your purpose? And it's kind of heady and sometimes can feel a little like, oh, um, my purpose in life. What if I don't have one? Does that make me not valuable? Of course not. You are totally valuable. Um, but I want you to kind of explore what your impact on the world, or what's your impact on the world around you? What makes you special? Why do you exist? This is harder to land on and might take some observations. But let's get some ideas on paper. Why do people want you in their meetings, at their parties? What would happen if you didn't show up? What would be missing? You know, what you want, what, what we kind of like to do in coaching is make this sort of a metaphor. I'm the blank, that blank. So, you know, you're the, you're the watering can that helps things grow. Um, so think for a minute or two, I'm, 
I don't think I'm going to spend too much time here because it's going to take you a little longer to do this, but I'm going to give you a minute uh, just to think about what impact and uh, you have think of a meeting or a social event. If you have been lucky enough to have a social event in the pandemic or something where, you, where if you hadn't been in the room, what would have been missing? That's a good way to think about your impact. And I'll give you a minute for this. Okay, um, so similar to the story, I'm not giving you a lot of time here because this is something you're going to have to live with and think about. Um, uh, but I think it's important to know what you're really good at and what impact you're having on your community and it will help for the leadership, which we're going to talk a little bit about a little bit later. Um, oh, there's a couple of resources I want to point, uh, point out to you that help give you language. So you might I, first of all, who doesn't love a quiz, right? <laughs> I mean, um, these quizzes are so fun and they're all over the um, internet and they work. Here are two of my favorites. Um, this woman, uh, Connie Podesta, um, she talks a lot about the shape quiz, which you may have heard of before. And I really love this one. It's archetypequiz.com. And it's really quick little, um, little quiz that will give you your three dominant it's not as important to, in my mind for you to know what your archetypes are. Um, and I've literally taken this quiz a million times and tried to cheat it and it always comes out the same. Uh, and it always is very accurate, but it gives you language. And I do think it's important to write these things down. And so you really, really um, embrace them. Um, and it, and they, both of these quizzes give you, will give you some language to, to use to talk about yourself or think about who you are. So for example, this shape quiz, um, squares are detail oriented, dependable and responsible. They work hard. They, they're very organized. They hate clutter. Triangles are the bottom line people. They hate to lose even more than they love to win. They're extremely confident. They like to debate and argue. Circles are more of the fun loving. They work like best on teams. They're the, um, they hate conflict and confrontation. They're really the empathetic and compassionate um, folks. And then the squigglies are sort of more the idea generators. They shoot from the hip. Sometimes they speak before they think. They don't like to be told what to do. I'm a squiggly. And one of the things that squigglies are like, we kind of come up with ideas and then we, I, I have a hard time staying focused on one thing because I like go, I get an idea and then I start going off on that tangent. And I actually have learned that I love to work that way. And I get better ideas if I just let myself be a little bit more free. I think that, um, so these quizzes can really help you articulate. I didn't really know that about myself until I took this quiz. I was like, you know, that is totally me. And Instead of fighting it, I now embrace it. So now you have a chart that looks like this. Um, impact, values, actions, and personality, and they you've got you've started to fill fill them in. Um, I would suggest that you live with what you have today for a while and then go back to it and see how and refine it. And when you're living with it, Think about go when you're going about your life, look at the impact you have on other people. Ask people, well, what impact do you think I had on that meeting? Or what impact do I have on you in general? Test out your values. 
see what you know on a daily basis, what seems to be more important to you. Maybe you want to add to your actions. Um, I'm going to share my brand with you. So you as just as an example. So I came up with the impact that I'm the illumination that creates momentum for a brighter future. My values are freedom, creativity, generosity, diversity, and integrity. I'm really happy with these five um, values. It took me a while to get there, but I know in particular when, um, when things started getting rocky at work, freedom and integrity were not being honored and it was time for me to move on. Um, actions. I'm the champion of ideas and people. I'm a connector. I teach, I coach, I write, I listen. I love to solve problems. I do play high level strategic board games. It's my favorite pastime. I like Settlers of Catan and Seven Wonders and I see the big picture. I'm more of like the big picture versus the detail kind of person. I do work hard to have perspective and I'm a visionary. My personality is casual, approachable. I'm an advocate. Um, I think I'm fun. I kind of have a question mark next to funny. My late husband thought it was really funny, but I kind of thought that died when he died. But sometimes every, every now and then people think I'm funny. Um, I'm definitely very passionate, sometimes gets in my way. Um, I, I get really excited about ideas and it can be a little off putting. I'm kind, I'm impulsive, and I am very, very strategic. Okay, so now let's move on. We take a breath. <gasps> that was a lot of hard work that we did really fast. Um, I love doing it really fast um, to get started, just so that, again, so you get your initial ideas down on the table. But I do think it's worth it to live with this for a while. Um, but the next step phase of a brand is to bring it to life and to think about first design. Um, design includes your color palette, pick a color, one or two or three, I wouldn't go more than five, um, and make them your colors. And maybe, you're, maybe your business has colors and maybe you have a logo, maybe you pick those colors because I don't, I don't think you should pick your colors based on what your favorite colors are that it might be, but like kind of look at your personality words and think what colors represent, um, see what colors really, really speak to them. the, 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 Color helps create mood and personality. And then I would suggest you use photography or illustration to create a mood board. Um, get a new headshot. Um, definitely, most people need new headshots. I should get a new headshot right now, too. But um, not so formal, more related to your first personality if you have a formal headshot. Um, a mood board is not a vision board. It's not what you want to be. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, board that says, this is who I am. Um, a voice or font, um, voice and font, choose a primary and if you like a secondary font that characterizes your brand voice. Um, and you, you can start using these fonts. The font that I'm using in this presentation right now, I worked hard to find a font that had a casual A instead of that, instead of that, um, um, Stacked A because um, I just think it feels much more friendly and I like to come across as a little bit more friendly. My color is a little bit more of a friendly color. Um, so these it's kind of fun to think about what your brand design is. Especially if you're going to put it into the marketplace. The next part is content. Now, this is a really important part of the um, of of your brand, if you're going to put it in LinkedIn or you're going to have it on a website, maybe it's a bio and it's a more interesting bio, um, but using the colors and font of, and voice of your brand, write your about me story. Bring who you are, your actions and your personalities and beliefs into your about me story. This is different than the story that you wrote, we wrote earlier in this webinar um, because this is what you want to tell other people. It might be on your website, your bio, LinkedIn profile. Um, think about what you want to say to someone about you if they're meeting you for the first time, or if you have, you guys probably aren't going on job interviews if you're entrepreneurs, but if someone says, hey, tell me a little bit about yourself, that would be your content. 
And we're going to do one, well, one more exercise uh, uh, for your elevator speech, because this can really help you get to what you want to put in your about me statement and what you might want to put in your um, uh, LinkedIn profile, which I think is the most important place to put your brand. Um, and this is really simple. You're going to do an I, you're going to make a list. I'm going to give you just a little bit of time. You're going to make a list of I am, I love, and I'm really good at. And we've, you probably already know this, these things, because we've already done through the other exercises. The I am is really very straightforward. It's what you are, um, what you love to do, and then what you're really good at. Just to give you a little example, this is way too long for an elevator speech, but I'm a professional marketing executive leadership coach. I'm passionate about raising the next generation of advertising and relations professionals. And my expertise in, is crafting brand strategies and inspiring creative. So you can kind of see what you're what we're trying to get at here. So I'm going to give you a minute to do an I am, I love, and I'm really good at to get to your elevator speech. Okay, that looks good. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about context. Um, you want to determine where you will communicate your brand. LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, um, the World Wide Web. Um, and if you are interested, there's, 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 this is a really good place, how to rock your LinkedIn uh, profile in eight steps. Um, I would suggest that the everybody have a great LinkedIn profile because this is where people search, whether you're an entrepreneur looking for jobs or anything. It's a great way to connect and you're probably all already on LinkedIn. So why not make your LinkedIn profile absolutely fabulous. So now we're going to take we're going to take a deep breath. Ah. Um, and I want to close up with a little conversation about leadership. Um, because your personal brand has a big impact on the kind of leader you are. And as we said earlier, that only 20% of leaders really know what their pur purpose is. And this guy, Warren Bennis, who started the Leadership Institute at the University of Southern California, um, said this wonderful thing, becoming a leader is synonymous with becoming yourself. It is precisely that simple, and it's also that difficult. So, so thinking about all of the work we just did today and that you will continue to do about really understanding yourself and what impact that has on your leadership. Um, leadership is really helps you have the impact that you want on the world around you. Um, it is also the number one predictor of the success, according to the Harvard Business Review. More effective leaders achieve higher performance. Leadership is a primary contributor to business performance and personal success. And leadership effectiveness is an ongoing part of personal growth and development. And based on my experience of 30 years in advertising and my own experience as a leader, it is really valuable to get in touch with your leadership strengths and understand your leader, your reactionary leadership. So at the risk of doing something, uh, well, let's talk about this first and then I'll. So the, uh, the CTI, the Coaches Training Institute, where I got my um, certification, has this sort of leadership model, which I think is really 
a nice model to look at and say, gee, I wonder where my natural tendencies are or where am I most comfortable as a leader? Now, leadership in this context is a role, not a position. So leadership from the front is what we tend to think about as people who have leadership positions. They are up front leading. Leaders from the side, besides, tend to kind of stand next to the people that they're leading and kind of lead together as partners. Leaders from behind tend to sort of step back a little bit and wait to see what's going to let people kind of do and then kind of step in when they see directions needed. Leaders from the field tend to be the big picture. They kind of take a global view, lead from, there's a lot of leading from the field right now on the pandemic. Um, and then the leaders from within, which is really you lead from within based on your actions. If you are a, if I environmental um, uh, issues are fought for, really, really important to you, then you lead, lead by example, maybe you ride your bike, you recycle everything, um, and you, you lead by example. I know in some levels we all lead by all of these things, but probably we have one that we're most comfortable with or we're most dominant with. And it's helpful to get and to look at your brand and think about what kind of leader comes naturally to me. Then, um, at the risk of be, I'm going to try to do this really quickly. Uh, it's a little complicated, but I want to like, I want to talk a little bit about how you might be able to also get in touch with more of your leadership strengths and take action on really improving your leadership to be authentic, your authentic leadership. You probably all know this leadership dilemma, which is that we often are spend all of our time reacting to problems or threats, a competitive threat, something might happen and something might happen in my business. It was the client called with really bad news. Um, that creates fear and we have a, a natural reaction and our lives are always putting out fires. And in this little chart at the bottom, you can see over time, you're not really all that effectiveness. You're getting very effective at putting out fires, but nothing else is really happening. And the problem is that once you put out a fire, you're kind of like, oh my God, I have to take the day off. And it's hard to get back on track. Whereas if you're leading from purpose or vision, um, you, you uh, focus on your passions, your actions are purposeful. This is an inside out leadership versus letting the outside um, control you. And over time, you start achieving your your goals and objectives. Um, so there, the I'm going to talk about another quiz, <laughs> the leadership circle profile, which you can take. You know, I'm going to like I'm actually going to skip this chart and go right to this one. So the leadership circle profile, you can it's leadershipcircle.com. You can take your free self assessment um, and find out how you view yourself as a leader and how that compares to effective leadership. So at the risk of getting way too complicated, I'm gonna quickly tell you what that's gonna show you. So they have this circle that they've done millions and millions, they've got a huge database and they've done all kinds of studies to get to the qualities of the circle, the creative competencies, which are over here on the side, which are the most effective leadership, it co highly correlates to leadership and business performance. And then there's reactive styles, complying, protecting, and controlling. We all have them. And they are our more natural tendencies. Um, again, uh, this would be on the bottom. So you can see that what happens, I'll go back to my little tree here. Your reactionary tendencies are kind of our roots because it's kind of our initial reactions, but we use our roots to thrive um, and let our tree grow. Um, becoming aware of the creative competencies that you have that correlate to business performance and also your reactive styles that correlate to limited effectiveness in business styles can be do so much, are really actionable leadership tools to help you really lean into your authentic personal brand and also 
improve your leadership effectiveness, which we can always do. It's a lifelong journey, I think. Um, and I really do. And I think that the, this leadership, cert, just do a free self assessment. The whole thing, it, you might want to do it with your companies. It's a 360 evaluation. It shows it not only does your own self assessment, but it shows how other people show you. It is my favorite leadership tool because it's actionable. Um, there's a lot of wonderful things out there with Myers Briggs and DISC and all these things. They are great at self awareness. This is great at actionability. Um, so that is um, that's my my talk on the how leadership can improve with your personal brand. Um, so in closing, I just want to say that I hope that you have a deeper understanding of what makes you happy or unhappy, how you live your values through your actions and personality, the impact you have on the world around you, your approach to effective leadership and a plan to communicate your authentic self and maybe a um, passion or a commitment to continue this work so that you are to thine own self be true and put your authentic self out um, every day. And thank you. I've enjoyed talking to my computer with knowing that there's a lot of other people out there and I hope that you found it valuable and I'm open to questions. All right, we have a we have a few questions. Um, please reins. They want you to say the steps slowly, at the end. Oh, okay. You want me to go back to the steps? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. We'll go here. Well, the first step actually is your story. So the first step is to write your story. The second step is to determine your values. And the reason you write your story first is your stories will help you uncover your values. Your third step is your actions. And try to focus on the actions that you know are leaning into your values. Your fourth step is your personality. And then your fifth step is your impact. How's that? I think I think that's I think that's good. Next question is can you provide me with advice for asking my peers about my impact? Uh, sure. That's a really, really good question. Um, uh, yeah, I would, I would, um, well, I would probably start with somebody who's willing to be honest with you. Um, but also say, Hey, I, I'm really, I'm doing the work of, of trying to understand, um, the, the my leadership, um, and the impact I have. And I'm curious as to what you would say, what kind of impact I have on you. Um, what are the things that you turn to me for? So, if you were asking a friend that sa said that says, um, you know, what, you know, what would it be like if I weren't your friend? What would you miss? It's kind of hard to like people don't want to, you know, it's hard for you to think of like, oh, what if I were no longer here? But it's not so hard for people to say to you, boy, if you weren't around, I would really miss you. Or the other thing that you can do is go to people. If you say, say you were at a, like I, I did this actually, I, when I wasn't at Leo Burnett anymore, I had people tell me, some people just came forth and said, here is what I really miss about you. But I went back to some people and said, so now that I'm not there anymore, what do you miss? Um, and um, you kind of get to impact that way. Does that answer your question? Well, next question, another question about impact. Can I please see the impact slide again? Okay. Oh, I wrote, I think I didn't go all the way back. Yeah, let me go back to the impact slide. Uh, 
Oh wait, did I miss it? No. Is this, I think this is slide you're looking for. What is your impact on the world around you? What makes you special Why you exist? It's a little headier. Um, okay, we have another question. It looks like they were trying to say archetype. You gave a website, I believe. Yes, archetype. I think you went too fast. They're asking for the website. Okay, it's the it's archetypequiz.com. I don't know how easily you can say this, but it should be arc, archetype, H A R C H E T Y P E S, archetypesquiz.com. What is your Myers Briggs type profile? Mine? What is your Myers Briggs? type profile yeah it does i i i, I want to understand the question are they asking what my personal one is or no m-y-e-r-s yes so what is a myers-briggs profile or what is mine i guess i don't understand the question myers-briggs is a uh you know very famous i think everybody knows what that is i actually do not remember what mine is i think it's um intj um, but it's been a long time since I've done it. Um, I am, I am a certified photographer. Still need to shoot my own. Okay. She worded this wrong. I am a certified photographer and I'm looking to do new headshots. So what would you suggest as far as advertising and promoting those headshots? Oh. Um, well, I think, um, you could, should think about what your, um, uh, well, hmm, let me think about this first hot minute. This is a tough question. So I would think about what, what kind of headshots do you want to do? What are you really good at? Um, what I think people need are headshots that bring out really who they are. I encourage my students in LinkedIn and I'm look, I look at headshots. This is like, this is your first impression. Your LinkedIn page is your first impression. And I would say most people do not, you know, really, really think about what they want that headshot to be. And maybe what you could do is really get good at helping people think about their authentic selves. What exactly do they want to communicate with their headshot? and market yourself to help bring out the best in them and what they want their LinkedIn profile to look like, what they want their headshot to say about them. Okay. Um, what is the name of the TED Talk you mentioned during a presentation? It's Simon Sinek. Um, uh, the, t the name actually wrote it down. I don't remember. If you just talk, uh, if you just, Google Simon Sinek, it will come up, but it is, I don't think I had the name of it in the slides. So let me look it up. I have it in my notes. It's called start with why, how great leaders inspire action. I listen to it all the time. It's really, it's really old and it's amazing how great it is. There's some really good story. He tells really good stories about the Wright brothers and. They're requesting contact information from you. How can they reach you? Um, uh, well, you can, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. It's Nina Abney and I N A A B N E E. So connecting with me on LinkedIn is a really great way. My website is www. Eyesforwardcoaching.com. When determining your logo, should you focus on colors that aid whatever business you are starting? For example, I'm starting a donut business. So should I use colors 
that entice hunger or is that old fashioned brandy? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I can't answer that question because I, I would suggest that what you do is go through this process for your donut business and think about what you want it to be. You know, do you want your, you know, donut, what do you want your donuts to be? Do you want it to be retro, your business to be retro? You know, the process is kind of the same. So think about what so Southwest Airlines went through and to come up with where they are because those, it was, you know, it was what they wanted. It was their, it was their why. So I would start with your why. Why are you going into the donut business? And how are you doing different businesses differently and come up with a strategy before you decide your logo? And then work with a designer. I have some good designers if you need some help with that, but work with, I would work with the designer to help with a loan and the designer is going to want to know what you are trying to communicate. You know, you, a good thing, a good logo exercise that's kind of fun to look at and to do is look at the logos of companies that have been around for 40, 50 years and look at the logos of companies that have been around for five or 10 years and look at their names. You know, you've got Google, Apple um, versus Allstate and State Farm. And the Allstates and State Farms trying to update their logos are having a hard time. It, the logos today are a lot simpler. You really need to also think when you think about a logo, I'm not a design expert, but when you think about a logo, you have to make sure that it works on the web. A lot of things are like the, what they're really, people who worked on like companies who've had logos from a long time ago are having a hard time simplifying it, like a hallmark, simplifying it down to something that looks good on an app. How can we integrate those two leadership dilemmas effectively? Oh, that's a big one. Um, I would. So I actually, I, I think the best advice I could give to you, I mean, you've ever heard that um, you might've heard the, the, a, a, the big rock um, analogy, the story about the big rock. Uh, essentially the big rock story is you have a, you have an empty glass. And every day that you go, you get up, you have your glass is empty and you can fill it with whatever you want to fill it with. And when we're putting out fires, we're putting it, it's being filled with all these pebbles and we're put, and then we fill it up and we put out the fire. But over here, there's this big rock and the big rock is what we really want to get at. But all the day to day stuff is interrupting us. So the best way to get out of that dilemma is to take that big rock and just, and so you might have to say every Tuesday, every Wednesday, I'm going to start with the rock and not let, and let the pebbles fall around me. And the other advice I'd say is when you have a fire, um, we kind of get, we kind of get our adrenaline going when you've got this sort of like fire, don't, you know, put out fire, don't life. Um, uh, try to when, once the instead of taking the day off after the fire is put out and you're sort of burned, um, like this used to happen in advertising with a new business pitch. It's like, or we have a we'd have a big creative pitch, and the next day we're like, I'm fried. I'm taking the day off. There's nothing wrong with that, but get, try to get right back on the longer term vision and not another fire. How often should we revisit these steps that you speak about and how, how often do you suggest that we update them? I just realized it might be nicer if you could see me while I was answering these questions. Should I, um, take the screen? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. No, what, that's was fine. what was that's the question? Good. How often? Yeah. How yeah. often should we revisit the steps that you mentioned and update it? Well, you know, um, I'd say take your time getting it to where you're happy with it and don't stop until you are and then live with it. I don't think you need, I don't really update mine. I think, I think who you are is who you are. I would be more interested. I think you more likely update what, um, what you, um, 
you know, if there's a change in your life or you, you might get some new learning. So it's, there's no set thing. It's more about a sense of like, you know what, I want to revisit this and see if I've changed or if there's things I want to change with it. But when you're executing it, I would revisit, I would revisit, I would, I would kind of look at you. Like if you've got a LinkedIn profile, or you're doing things on the web or you, you've got a website, I would revisit that more often to see if you want to update it. There's no real set ways, but I think like once I got to my five values, they have not changed in three years. Which leadership site gave the most actionable advice? It was leadership circle. The leadership circle profile. It's a, it's a process that's very actionable. They don't really give you advice, but they help you become aware of your leadership. Um, and if, you know, it, it's the best, here it is, sorry. The best way to do this is actually with a 360 evaluation and you have other people fill out the, it as well, but you can get a lot of learning taking this free self-assessment and simply understanding and there's a book they wrote a book too and it's all on the website um simply understanding what has proven to be effective leadership styles and leadership qualities and understanding your own reactionary tendencies and what those how those might some of them are are very helpful and some of them can get up can be damaging to you so kind of just becoming aware of your natural reactionary tendencies, your creative tendencies, your leadership strengths, and paying attention to those, um, I, I highly recommend the Leadership Circle Profile. Kind of just get started with it, and I think you'll just learn a lot about effective leadership. I mean, you can always hire a coach and go through the whole process if you want but I think you can get a lot for free. <laughs> okay, I am checking to see if we have any more questions. So while I'm doing this, do you have any last words of encouragement or advice for our attendees today uh no i hope that you will um i hope that this will help you um get in touch with with who you are and create um you know create get some of the same results that i know some of my students have had and some of my clients where they really um I, in my view i'd say the values are the most important part because they will help you both in your personal and professional life and I'm very happy to have been here today and I, I hope that you found it valuable. And I thank you very much for inviting me. Well, thank you so much for this presentation. It was very informative. If you are a member of the, if you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program and would like to receive credit for today's webinar, please send us an email at two BACP outreach at city of Chicago.org. Again, that email is BACP outreach at city of Chicago.org. And if you would like to find out more about this program, please visit us at Chicago.gov forward slash business education. Also, you can find out about our upcoming webinars on that website as well, too. So if we don't have, let me do one more quick check for questions. Okay, looks like we don't have any more questions. So right. thank you guys for attending this morning and have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you.